Welcome back to Comic Jutsu. I'm JT McRoberts. Today we're going to do something really fun as I'm going to share a look at an unboxing with you. We're going to dig into my unboxing of Heavy Metal Magazine, the year 1980, and bits of 1984-1985. Let's get to it. See 1985 peeking through there on the cover on the top just because I recognize that particular cover with the heavy metal insignia logo all over it. Love the look of that. Let's dig deeper. Longtime denizens of the dojo will tell you that heavy metal magazine was one of my so called unholy grails of fantasy science fiction. And, uh, yeah, softcore porn, I guess, because of all the graphic nudity. As a kid, I suppose my cartoon reading journey began with these Sunday funnies with Peanuts and Hagar the Viking and Flash Gordon and whatever else was in there. And I eventually graduated to comic books by way of whatever was whatever licensing gimmick pulled me in whether it was Star Wars or G.I. Joe or what have you and then eventually into the Marvel classics and of course Batman Superman but anyway I would don't want to go too far down that road every Friday I would go through the ritual of collecting my my uh, allowance for mowing the yard and doing whatever chores needed to be done and combine that with uh, my little bit of money from mowing yards throughout the neighborhood and I would ride my bicycle down to the local Rite Aid where they had the spinner rack and I would uh, dig through the new comic books every week. But just adjacent to that spinner rack was the magazine rack against the wall and it was very tall and at the very top and at the back of the rack were the heavy metal magazines, so I could always see the very top of it, but the rest of it was hidden. I would have to wait for uh, no one to be looking, which was pretty much all the time because that little section of the store was just kind of off in the corner, and I would reach up and grab the latest heavy metal magazine and flip through it, you know, and just uh, <laughs> have my mind blown away by it. It was always surreal, crazy, fantastic. Yeah, science fiction, violent, brutal, all of those things. But, of course, I could never buy it, but I did uh, always try to catch a glimpse of it. So, anyway, here we go. I've, I've extricated the contents of the box and set them to the side, moved the camera in just a little bit closer to give you a better look at these covers, at least. And it seems that uh, they are all individually bagged, so in no particular order just in what they have come out of the the actual box itself here's april 1985 there's one missing a cover i managed to get the these two lots for a pretty decent price i did have to uh, win the auctions for both of them they came through relatively cheap i did have competing um, buyers at the same time so i had to deal with that and actually win no. Interview with Tom Holland, Fright Night. I recognize this cover because I think there is a Mobius um, feature somewhere inside. Let's see what it is. The Blind Citadel by Gerard. Starting on page 10. Ooh, the cover for this one is loose too. It just slid off. That looks like it right there. Just jumps into a little little piece of fantasy by Moebius. However one says his name, I pretty much mispronounce all names, whether they be 
of American origin or foreign <laughs> from foreign shores. I'm an equal opportunity mispronouncer. Oh, this is a really nice piece. Yeah, well, as always, we could... Oh, it's just the back that's, that's um, separated from it. As always, we could go through the entire thing, the entire uh, book page by page, but that would take up way, way, way too much time. So we're just going to keep things moving. There we see December 1980, October 1980. I recognize this. I think this one has the uh, Moebius Rock City feature in it. September 1980, August 1980. This one has another something in it. I rec recognize this cover. Let's take a look at it. Here we go. Yeah, that ad for airplane. That ad was everywhere from the time that came out. And it's still a classic, mind you. Showing my age there. Okay, we've got Little Tiny Comics by Rick Veach. Um, there's a few different things. Art My Bilal. Larry Elmore. Oh, there we go. Webius Mysteries of Eroticism. I guess this is number 41. Oh, there we go. This has got the Webius interview. That's the fun thing to me. Oh, this is this piece about getting a batch of uh, heavy metal magazine all at once. As you hear the uh, motorcade go by outside my window. But, oh man, look at the coloring on this. He must have done, done his own coloring here. Is that, uh, you know, Every issue might not be just filled to the brim with stuff that you love, but over the course of the year, you'll find there's something in every issue that you love. And by the end of it, you'll have a lot of uh, really nice little gems that you've collected and you can go and dig into, like this Moebius interview here. Wow, look at these surreal designs, crazy stuff. Here's these inter interviewed by Diana Bletter. National White Lampoon White Album. That's pretty cool. But anyway. This could easily turn into a flip through of all of these books. I think this one has a Drillette piece in it. There's a cover you should recognize. Giger's Necronomicon. Crazy. Wacky stuff. I like that they're all individually bagged. That was nice of him. Because uh, he kind of grossed up the charges on the on the shipping. Because I, I played, paid the same, same shipping price on both lots. It was two different auctions. It was 1980 by itself. And then 1984 and 1985. And the shipping was the same on it. And that was the same as the price on the box. But it actually had both years inside of it. So you got a little extra there. This is this cover is Repent Harlequin, said the TikTok man, uh, which is based on a Harlan Ellison story, which I've read the comic book version of, and I've listened to the audiobook version once, and for the life of me, I couldn't tell you what it what it's about. I'll have to revisit it sometime. There's a really nice surreal piece, the eyeball back there, as John Lennon would say. Surreality is reality to me. He wouldn't say it like that. That's a horrible impression. That's why I'm here talking comics and cartooning with you rather than making a living doing impressions somewhere. May 1980. Okay, so that's all of 1980. So let's see what is in the other year. October 1984. August 1984. Yeah, this is very. This has a very 80s look to it. Like this is almost archetypally 80s. Where if you 
told an AI today to give me an 80s look. It would just give you this cover to heavy metal magazine, and then someone else would sign their name to it. Oh, here we go. Another missing cover. It's part of why I was able to get this on the cheap is that there were a, a few issues where the covers were missing. We'll just have to let those be the mystery issues for now, but July 1984. This looks like they're using Joan Jet here as their reference almost. Capturing jellyfish. Crazy stuff. I love it. Oh, Monty Python there. Another nice cover. Just bringing that kind of that fetishistic sensibility to fantastic storytelling, at least for the American masses. I mean, overseas they uh, they have a lot better variety. Got somebody's name on there. I'm not sure if that's the guy I got it from, or if this was from uh, an auction estate. Boris Vallejo. Modern Day Vampires Unmasked in this issue, January 1984. My goal is, you know, I wouldn't be ashamed to have every issue, you know, just every year of Heavy Metal Magazine. But at the very least, I would like to have it through the mid to late 80s, maybe the 90s. There were some other good eras, too. Here we see... Uh, Richard Corbin piece right there on the cover. Very nice. Look at that coloring, man. So much fun. Mad Max, George Miller interviewed. And here we are all these years later, 2024. And Furiosa is going to be released in just a week or two by the same George Miller, another Mad Max saga film. Good stuff. February 1985. So with this little bit, I've almost filled in January 85. The entirety of, of the first half of the 1980s. Um, I don't have 1983, so I need to fill that in. And maybe a few pieces of 1982. And then, you know, I'll still need more of 85 and 84. But there you go. All right. That's it. And thus concludes my unboxing. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any tips on some uh, interesting things inside the pages of one of these magazines, or if uh, you feel like it would be fun to do a flip through of one of these, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.